Hi, welcome back to Physics Solution Manual and we are still discussing about dimension analysis. So, the, the previous um, video I explained to you about a little bit about dimensions. So now we are going to use them as tools of physics and important tools of, or in physics nonetheless. So why do we need dimensions to really, what, what's going on with them? So one of the ways that you are going to use dimension is to understand the formulas. So you're going to need them to understand a formula, why a formula is such a way it is being constructed in such a way and what is the um, reason or symmetry behind it. So that is explained by a dimension analysis. And another question that we are going to answer is, is it valid? So it, is it we are going we have to make sure that it's not just a mumbo jumbo hocus pocus but a valid formula so that uh, is where dimension analysis comes into rescue so previous um, video i explained to you um, that mass is um, you can measure mass in terms of different units again remember units are different standards of measurement you have a unit a scale for example when you talk about length you have a meter scale you have a foot scale and then you might have a yard scale so all these there are different scales but ultimately you're measuring a length right so that is the physical quantity that you're measuring and similarly for mass you have a pound you have kilograms you have grams you can go even um, lesser, you can go for uh, milligrams and so on. So, but ultimately you're going to me measure mass. So that is the quantity that you're measuring. So that is the dimension and you have mass um, and to indicate the dimension of the quantity, we are going to use this representation, which is a square bracket indicating what quantity that you are going to measure for in the case of mass you have m in case of length you have l and in case of um, time you have t right so let's discuss let's see some of the derived quantities these are the fundamental quantities that you would need to they are just enough to understand mechanics so we'll leave it as it is so we don't have to worry about electricity as of now so right now you don't have to worry about it but you can give yourself some exercise um, you can use electricity and um, some of the quantities and you can take them and then you can analyze them on your own or we'll do that in the class okay so so you have velocity so velocity is nothing but distance over time distance is nothing but a length again you can measure a distance in terms of in terms of yard foot meter yada 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 but nonetheless ultimately you're going to measure the length of the particular or particular place or object or particular place so in terms of distance you're going to uh, cover the uh, path that you uh, that we have that the object has traveled so length and then in the denominator you have the time so in time you're, you just have the same plain Jane scale which is second all right so since it's in the new denominator you're going to take that uh, you're going to take that to the numerator and you have length time inverse so again so some of the other derived quantities that you would need is acceleration so velocity times um, velocity divided by time and again we know that velocity is length times time inverse and you have another time in the denominator you bring that up you have another inverse and then those two inverse add together and they give you a length times time all right so let's see how the dimension analysis works so before going into that um i have to tell you a little bit about the rules so the rules are that they're very simple not many you just have to be consistent
and then you have to be um, consistent I'll let you I'll come to that in a bit and then constants don't have dimensions any dimensions actually so anyway so we'll see what does that mean in terms of consistency and how does this dimension less uh, the lessness dimension lessness would help us uh, understanding a formula so let's take the most basic formula that you were, are going to learn in kinematics which is um, the first formula the final velocity equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time right so what is the dimension of the final velocity it's a velocity right let's get that straight so final initial middle doesn't matter it's a velocity so the velocity uh, the dimension of the velocity is yeah length time inverse so let's put that in and then you have p naught which is the initial velocity so again it's still a velocity so you're going to have the same dimension so length time inverse plus you have acceleration so acceleration here is l oh yeah there you go so l t negative 2 times you have time so time inverse so that going that is going to give you um time right so let's break it down here so this stays the same this stays the same but here you have a very interesting combination so you have lt inverse right? mind you there are certain rules that every formula follows plus you have l and then you again the same uh, the, if you remember the um, rule for exponential multiplication you will know that when um, you have same base and two different denominators you're going to add them so l t to the power negative 2 plus 1 so you get negative 1 so that um, so that's basically negative 1 right there so um, you have L T so you have L T negative 1 so you have L T negative 1 L T to the power negative 1 L T to the power negative 1 so your consistency is maintained so that is what I meant with uh, with respect to consistency so you cannot one more thing you can uh, with respect to this consistency the thing that um, is you cannot add two different dimensions no adding length with mass that is not a way to go with it so you can if you have um, this situation then you might have to reconsider your formula that means there's something wrong with the formula length and mass are two different things you cannot add them together right so um, yes so that is where your consistency comes into play so next up you have the um, you have the constants part so let's take a formula again in kinematics so that's like the easiest one and so the formula that we would um, sorry not three the formula that I would like to use is um, distance equal to um, initial velocity times time plus final um, half times acceleration to root times square let's break this down as well so distance again the dimensions for distance is l and then you have velocity so we know that initial velocity is l times um, l t to the power 1 and then you have this time so this would translate to um, yeah so this would translate to um, its own t 
so that's time so the dimension of time t and then you have t half so we don't need constant over here so i'll i'll tell you what happens so we don't have a constant so the constants don't have a dimension so that goes out of the window so, and then you have acceleration which is l t to the power negative 2 times um okay yeah one second i forgot to put the brackets um, and then you have the t square so which is t to the power 2 again remember when you have the same base and two different numerators uh, sorry not numerators powers um, two different powers you are going to add them together so you have l these two add together and they become t to the power negative one plus one so that's zero basically and then you have this little bunch right here so you have l t to the power negative 2 and 2 so negative 2 plus 2 and then this also goes to um wait wait, wait. when i say 0 the new uh, the power goes to 0 so um let me just put that okay so let these goes uh, they go to 0 so t to the power 0 is 1 so you end up you're left with l plus why do i do this hmm. plus l so your consistency is maintained so um constants don't have dimensions because they don't need a dimension you're not um, when you say one half you're not measuring a quantity you're measuring you're calculating a number you're putting a number on top and then you're dividing a number on the denominator right so you don't need a con uh, dimension you're not um you ha you're not having any dimensions in this case right so one by two do not have any dimension right and um what else can we say what else is there um any dimensionless quantities that come to mind okay what about constants the proportionality constants for example you have oh no some of the proportionality constants do have um dimensions so yeah Um, I guess so from with this we can conclude our dimension analysis and uh, I hope that you understood the concept and I'm going to follow up with some of the form uh, some of the problems from the book so um, college physics by survey I, I hope that I am pronouncing um, this professor's name correctly. If not, I apologize. Okay, so um, see you guys in the next video. And please leave your suggestions down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.